Another uh, common symptom and sign uh, that's associated with sleep apnea uh, is bruxism or grinding and clenching of the teeth. Uh, This is a, a common occurrence in sleep apnea and with treatment of the sleep apnea, it actually resolves. So it's important to understand that a bruxism, while it's a movement disorder that occurs during sleep, we understand that, and it can have important dental clinical implications and can itself cause uh, problems of uh, joint pain or muscle, uh, masseter muscle pain. Uh, it's important to understand that uh, it can be aggravated and caused really and caused to appear by sleep apnea. Uh, this has been now well established and it's probably as good an associate or correlate with sleep apnea as high blood pressure or snoring even. So it's, it's very, very common uh, that uh, sleep apnea and bruxism are fellow travelers. They go together. Uh, and and in general, you treat the sleep apnea and the bruxism will go away. There's another interesting feature uh, that uh, dentists should be very aware of, and that is that uh, treatment of the bruxism by the traditional method of putting an appliance of some sort in the mouth, and there are different appliances. I'm no expert on that, but they're appliances that separate the teeth and prevent damage caused by the clenching and grinding. Uh, of bruxism. It turns out that uh, that appliance uh, won't treat sleep apnea. It just keeps the teeth apart and hence uh, minimizes the damage. But in fact, it can make the sleep apnea worse. Some of them actually uh, retrude or push the mandible back. Now, a retrusion of the mandible is clearly not a good idea if you have sleep apnea. Uh, Already, we have an airway problem, and so what the goal is is to improve the size of the airway and the stability of the airway. Well, some of the bruxism appliances can actually do the opposite. So it's very important uh, to understand that. It's been well established by good evidence, and... uh, The important uh, feature to remember is that uh, bruxism may be associated with sleep apnea, and if it is, uh, the uh, traditional bruxism appliance may not be the useful approach for sleep apnea. On the other hand, treating the sleep apnea will generally uh, treat the bruxism and, and have it resolved. So in a situation where you have both bruxism and sleep apnea, it makes a lot of sense to treat the sleep apnea and see what happens to the bruxism. In all likelihood, it will improve. So, so remember that bruxism is a tight associate of sleep apnea and that uh, any uh, treatment of bruxism should uh, include the possibility that someone has sleep apnea. And so taking a careful history regarding uh, the four things I mentioned, snoring, high blood pressures, gasping and choking, and large neck circumference, those things are important in uh, screening for high blood pressure, for screening for sleep apnea, uh, so that uh, you will know whether it's a fellow traveler uh, in your patient and, and if so, if the patient has bruxism and sleep apnea, start with treating the sleep apnea, not the bruxism. If you treat the bruxism with a traditional way, you may make the sleep apnea worse.